All right, welcome to uh, Greek Memories of Azure, any person. Um, so Greek Memories of Azure is a uh, uh, Metroidvania game where you play as the titular Greek, um, who is a Koran, um, trying to flee the lands of Azure with his two siblings, Adara and Radel, um, from whom he has gotten separated. Um, so uh, Greek is this nimble little guy. <clears throat> he has this uh, neat little dodge roll. Uh, he can double jump. Um, and he has a, a little short sword that he can attack with while he's still moving. Um, between the three characters, Greek is by far the fastest, and we are going to end up using him uh, a lot. Um, over the course of the run, we'll be looking for ways to leave our siblings behind and do things just with Greek, um, because it's faster than carrying our siblings around everywhere, uh, even though we're looking to all leave together. Um, so uh, this is a little tutorial area. Um, there's another one right after this um, where we will learn how to work with siblings in a dream sequence. Um, and then, uh, you know, we are basically back to Greek by himself uh, for a little while. Um, so uh, there's uh, a bunch of different types of enemies that we're introduced to here as well. Um, but uh, this is a very short area. We get to this bridge. We fall as fast as possible. Um, and that takes us out of the solo tutorial sequence and into the dream sequence um, where we are implored to wake up uh, by our uh, sister. Uh, and uh, sister-related things are often marked by butterflies. Um, there are also these like sigils that appear on trees. Um, but so uh, we also get a quick climbing tutorial here. Um, ladders and, and vines and stuff. But meet Adara. Um, Adara uh, does not have a dodge roll. She has a backdash. Um, it's kind of hard to use effectively, um, though technically it is faster than her walking speed. Um, and it's not effective to use while uh, mimicking, which is one of the main ways that we move around siblings at the same time. Uh, she can't double jump. She hovers. Um, her hover is uh, slower than her walking speed, but it does allow us to get places that we might other not, other, otherwise not be able to get. She also jumps higher than Greek um, by default. That's um, a really interesting thing about it. She doesn't jump as high when mimicking. Um, when mimicking, characters jump the same height to help keep them packed together. Um, so as you can see, like it's obvious now that uh, Greek's dodge roll is faster than his base walking speed. You can see it by comparing it to uh, Adara's walking speed um, when they're mimicking. Um, so uh, they are. Uh, so this this introduces sibling puzzles to us. Um, so you know we have these switches that one person has to hold down while the other one does something else. In this case, we're supposed to put the block on the switch, but pushing it through and getting uh, damaged to the other side of the wall is faster. Um, so uh, you know we're doing that. Um, we have we're introduced to the mimic mechanic and also to the regroup mechanic. Um, so the left trigger and the right trigger by default are regroup and Mimic. Mimic makes your um, siblings move in the exact same way that you do, but it doesn't make them mimic your attacks. So they'll jump when you jump and they'll run when you run, but that's, you know, that's as far as it goes. Um, and when, when mimicking, you always double jump, you never hover. <clears throat> Regroup, your main character will stand still while your other characters uh, run to them. So during this dream sequence, uh, Greek is found at the bottom of a waterfall by scouts from Raven's Road Camp, um, where we wake up and this uh, helpful woman, uh, Riam, uh, will uh, give us a little bit of a lecture and also give us some food uh, and teach us how to eat. So now we open our inventory and we eat and we can't continue the conversation with her until we've recovered at least one of the three life points that our soup gives us. Um, this also teaches us that food takes some time to work. Um, this is true of ingredients that you find in the wild as well as cooked dishes. We're not going to cook anything in this run. Cooking takes too long, um, <clears throat> but uh, you do, uh, you can cook things um, and cooked food takes a little while to eat. Um, we're saving the game there really quickly. We're not going to save that many times over the course of the run except for safety, um, but this one isn't for safety. This is to avoid a lecture by a guard on our way out. Um, this guy, Tauros, is trying to build an airship. He wants our help. He wants us to find him four ropes. Um, we choose the bottom dialogue option because it's faster. Um, it's not that much faster. It means that you don't get to mash through. So it's kind of fine either way. Uh, but it is uh, slightly faster to take the bottom option when that dialogue comes up. 
Um, so welcome to Valora Waterfalls. Um, we are going to use our dodge roll uh, in a couple of different important ways here. Um, one is to fast fall. If you dodge roll off of a ledge, um, you fast fall. Um, and if you dodge roll off of a ledge and then jump uh, during your coyote time, uh, you get to keep some of your dodge roll momentum. Um, these red crystals that exist in the world have life points in them between one and three life points. Um, it can be hard to direct them toward the correct character once you have more than one character at a time because they're just absorbed by whoever they run into. Um, and positioning your, your characters separately is uh, actually, like it can be fairly difficult. Um, but we, we will make use of them to help restore our life points um, when possible uh, without consuming our consumables because we'll want to keep those consumables for times where we need to restore life um, but don't have any crystals uh, handy. Um, so we're going we're gonna to skip that one. It's actually pretty hard to get um, from that platform, but we are going to go ahead and uh, use our crossbow. Greek actually has a crossbow, by the way, to hit it. Um, we're going to use the crossbow very sparingly. Uh, we use it in one boss fight. Um, uh, and, uh, I, to hit that one crystal if necessary, um, the dodge roll also makes you invincible, uh, while you're going through it, by the way. So it is really useful for avoiding enemies. Um, a lot of the times you can just jump over attacks as well if you don't have space to dodge roll. Um, but, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, faster to dodge roll, obviously, because the dodge roll also gives you a speed boost. Uh, so we usually want to use that to avoid attacks if we can. Um, but sometimes what happens is that we end up um, in a position where you would dodge roll into an attack. Uh, and so we try to avoid that, basically. Um, another interesting thing or important thing about the movement mechanics is that if you fall from too high, uh, your characters will stagger for a moment before being able to move again. So uh, uh, a uh, common uh, common thing that you'll see us doing in the movement in this is double jumping just before we hit the ground um, in order to uh, prevent from uh, taking that stagger. You just saw that stagger a couple of times there where I didn't jump quite correctly uh, in order to prevent it. So we've got our four ropes. <clears throat> We're going to go back to Tauros and give them to him. And he's going to he's going to be so impressed that we got him these ropes. He's going to ask us to go get him some gas too. Um, and to get gas, he's going to give us uh, special gas cans. Um, and uh, these gas cans, uh, you know, it says, you know, to store a volatile liquid. Um, we're going to have to run by this guy, this blacksmith Valgor here. He doesn't sell us, um, swords. He'll sell us a better crossbow, um, but, uh, we're, we're not going to pass that up. Uh, we are going to buy a couple of whetstones though. And what whetstones do is that they increase the damage output of our sword temporarily by one point of damage. Uh, it's not stacking, so you can't use a bunch of whetstones and get a bunch of damage up. Um, but we are going to collect, uh, two more whetstones over the course of the run. Um, and use those uh, for uh, both Greek and his older brother, Radel, who also has a sword, um, to increase their damage output uh, by 50% uh, for Greek, because he does two damage by default with his sword, so uh, plus one damage per strike uh, is a pretty hefty bonus. Um, Radel does two to f or three to four damage per strike with his sword, depending on where he is in his combo, so that's a 33 to 25, or 25 to 33% damage increase. Um, we're not going to stop to fight these enemies uh, or to save the game, but we are going to pick up consumable items because they are uh, important backups for us. Um, so in this uh, in this forest area, um, we're going a little bit out of our way uh, because we want to hit a fast travel point. Um, it is the only fast travel point aside from the one in camp that we will use during the game, um, but it saves a, a huge bunch of time. Um, so the fact that we're going out of our way to get to it here um, is actually uh, is actually fairly productive. Um, so down here we hit the fast travel point, um, and then we'll continue to the left uh, to get to the Vega Marshes, which is where we can find our uh, our gas. Um, so uh, the the thing about having uh, adequate health in Vega Marshes um, is that there are a bunch of light puzzles. Um, you have to like control a beam of light and reflect it off of things. Um, and so you have to set the direction of the light and the direction of the, um, the reflectors um, to uh, control moving platforms so that you can cross um, vast distances. Um, and we're going to skip some of those by taking damage, basically. 
Um, here we are at our first boss of the run. This boss has a bunch of trash before the boss actually comes out. Um, so uh, unfortunately, uh, RNG is a, a big deal in this fight. Where the scouts appear and disappear uh, while they're jumping around um, is, uh, is random. Um, and so uh, getting, getting them dead uh, quickly can be really rough. Uh, the same thing is true for the boss, actually, uh, is where he appears and disappears is, is RNG. Um, and so, uh, you know, we got a couple of good swipes in there, but he'll, you know, as soon as he sees us, um, he'll uh, start disappearing. So we, we'll use the crossbow a couple of times to score a couple of extra hits if we're, um, if we're not able to get sword hits in. Um, and so that was a pretty good fight RNG wise. Um, certainly not the best possible fight RNG wise. We would have liked to get more long runs of damage in. Um, but, uh, that, um, those scouts, the, their teleporting behavior is, is actually really annoying. Um, that is the only boss that we have to deal with that has that kind of behavior. Um, so that's good. Um, but, uh, that's yeah, and you'll see that I'm not doing the um, dodge roll dodge roll jump on those logs. Um, the reason for that is it is possible for uh, the way that that uh, extra speed interacts with the water to get you trapped inside of a wall uh, and not able to move anymore, um, and then you drown and it's bad news. It's the end of the run, so we don't. I don't do that. Um, swinging on these ropes, th these two ropes in particular, um, can be a little bit finicky. And try to be extra careful. So there's a couple of these light puzzles that we can't skip. Um, there's no way to make that distance without uh, uh, landing in the spikes. And spikes on the ground uh, are um, a, you know, they're like a, a bottomless pit. They'll reset you to the, the nearest platform. So we can't just walk over the spikes. The wall spikes here, so we could take damage from those wall spikes on the left wall and climb up uh, using damage boosting. Um, but... Uh, we're not going to on that one because we want to save our life points for one that's a little bit more important later. Uh, that saves a little bit more time. Um, that skip uh, is pretty nice because it involves, it lets us not have to like hunt down and kill that scout um, basically uh, to, to do a two wheel setup for that platform. Um, so now we have Adara. Welcome. Uh, welcome to sibling puzzles again. Um <clears throat> And uh, we're also right next to our first gas container. Um, so we're going to go ahead. Uh, we're actually going to switch to Greek and drop a couple of items for Adara to pick up so that she uh, can restore health points as well uh, quickly when we get to the point where we need uh, need health for the skip. Um, so we're going to jump over here. We're going to go ahead and uh, kill, uh, kill this uh, scout or mostly kill this scout. Um, he's going to troll us with one dart from just far enough away to hit us. Um, we're going to get our first container and then the scout is going to troll us again with another um, another dart right there, which means we're going to have to refill a little bit of life uh, before we get through to our next uh, through that through the next skip. Um, so we're going to um, go through here. Uh, we are actually going to uh, not only eat uh, but also save our game. Um, because in case something goes wrong in the skip, I don't want to go super, super far back. Um, uh, and, and it is, it is possible to game over on that skip. It is, you know, not, um, not the biggest time loss. We are going to eat, uh, one more health point for Adara right here, uh, because we do, we need all, all three possible hits that we might take, um, uh, without dying to get through this. Um, see, uh, and Adara is at one health now, so we're going to go ahead and feed her up to full, uh, we'll uh, we'll get Greek uh, his life points back here uh, if the contact will register. Um, there we go. And there we go. Uh, now everybody's at full health. And this is our second boss encounter of the run. Um, it's worth noting that the platform that the boss encounter happens on, you can't ledge grab it and you can't wall slide on it. So it's very easy to accidentally fall into the spikes on either side of the pit while you're, while you're navigating. So you do have to be a little bit careful of that. Um, so this is Kafor uh, Jordza, uh, Erlog Warlock. Um, he'll throw fire at us and occasionally he will spawn enemies. Um, he'll also kind of dash around the screen uh, here and there. Um, 
The most important thing for uh, fighting bosses with siblings is to keep uh, everyone stacked. Um, your inactive siblings will auto attack um, at the same time as your active character attacks, uh, as long as they're in range and facing the right way. Um, so keeping everybody kind of stacked right on top of each other means that you can position people precisely um, and do a bunch of extra damage. Um, so uh, if if the um, if Kafor is allowed to um, drop those meteors he was spawning, um, he can do a lot of damage very quickly, and the what is otherwise an easy boss fight can become quite precarious. Um, so it is really important to stack up, get that extra damage in, and get killed. We're going to uh, grab a second can of gas, um, an emblem over here that's going to let us uh, escape the ruins. Um, uh, I wasn't stacked well there, so uh, I didn't get uh, grabs on both of those. Um, <clears throat> and then this is... So this this is actually just to the right of where we came in in the first place. So we could have gotten this gas canister right at, uh, as we came in um, from here. You'll recognize where we are right now. But it makes more sense since we have to go around anyway to get the bronze crest to get out of here um, to just pick it up on the way out. There was also another opportunity to get a gas canister that we passed up on. Um, it involves uh, solving a terrible puzzle, um, or at least a slow puzzle. Um, and so we're actually going to do this skip with both of the characters independently because uh, they have different jumping dynamics when mimicking is happening. Um, and it's hard to get both of them up at the same time. Um, but it's very fast. It's actually pretty fast to do them both separately uh, because it's easy for each of them independently to do. Um, so now we're actually able to leave the Vega Marshes um, and move back on. Um, so when you have both uh, when you have more than one character in the same area, um, the game will ask you to confirm uh, that you want to leave the area, uh, even if both characters are out there. Uh, but this this takes us to a part of Valora Waterfalls that we could not access before. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and uh, make our way back to town. This is another type of uh, another couple of types of sibling puzzles here. Um, the like seesaw platforms and um, the uh, the uh, the cranks uh, basically to give ladders as a like means of passage. Um, so and it's not always just like holding down uh, a button or something like that to let your sibling through. Sometimes you have to go and like open a door or turn a big wheel or something. Um, so here, in fact, we are going to turn a big wheel to lower a platform. Um, and that is going to allow Adara to pick up here. Um, one interesting thing about regrouping is that um, if you, uh, if the, if the char a character that you are calling to regroup is holding a, a crank or some sort of other device, uh, they will let go of that thing. Um, in order to regroup with you so it, you don't have to like switch to them and like let go of the crank uh, manually you can just call them to regroup uh, and they'll come to you um, so we are actually back at Ravens Road Camp um, there's a little like trolley bit of dialogue here this comes into a um, endless uh, that first choice won't terminate the conversation um, so you do actually have to like be cognizant of where the menu is going to come up um, so Valgor is going to give us our next quest. We're going to leave Adara right by Valgor. Um, and uh, so that we basically come back to pick her up. So Greek can move faster, go turn in the quest. Um, Taurus will tell us to talk to Valgor. So now we have to go back to talk to Valgor. Greek will move faster than he would if Adara was coming along. Um, so we'll, we'll separate them up like that. Um, Valgor will ask us to go uh, through the forest um, to the upper exit over to uh, a fortress uh, where there are forges that we can use to um, refine Lorien. Uh, now I make a little mistake right here uh, and teleport only Greek because I thought that with them in Mimic Distance and me holding down Mimic, they would both go. Uh, so I actually now have to change areas back and teleport Adara separately. Normally you can teleport them both at the same time, but this is why it's important to, one of the reason why it's important to keep your characters stacked. Um, so uh, that was a, a little bit of a time loss. Not, not as bad as I remember it being, but um, so... Uh, in uh we have uh th these platforms uh right here especially like with this thing um is like it's very easy to get knocked off there um so it's uh important to be pretty careful um 
in uh, the fast travel saves us a huge amount of time. Um, in uh, in uh, in this area, um, rather than having to retread uh, the entire forest, um, it is important to to clear these out. Greek is going to be standing here holding this crank while Adara goes to the other side, um, collects a few more healing items. Um, and goes and grabs the other crank on the other side. So this is the other variation of the hold the button puzzle is uh, find the other crank and hold it open so that the door stays open. Um, otherwise that door will shut. Um, you know, we've seen that crank puzzle before uh, when we fought the first boss or the second boss. Um, and so again here, I'm just gonna regroup to call Adara back over without uh, having to switch over to her to let go of the crank um, and this will take us over the bridge and into the fortress, uh, where we can refine our raw Lorien into a brick of Lorien. Um, this fortress is pretty beat up. Sorry, beat up fortress. Um, an important thing about this area, um, so <laughs> when I was first running this, um, there was a, a skip that I was using for this area, um, that allowed, uh, uh, allowed you to uh, do the area in a faster order. It involved taking a hit from something um, over here that would allow Adara to uh, double jump, basically, um, before she floated, um, and then float up and uh, skip having to go around the long way um, to to pick up one of the gears. Um, the unfortunate thing about this is that uh, it doesn't work with VSync off, um, but VSync off makes the game substantially faster, um, like noticeably faster um, and much more responsive as well. So, um, so uh, rip that particular uh, that particular skip. Um, farewell to Plague Launcher, um, as I liked to call it, because you were taking these Plague Crawlers and using them to launch you uh, a little extra up. Um, but uh, so uh, we're basically, uh, we're going to do this uh, this puzzle. Uh, this is a very messy, uh, I got uh, thrown by having, uh, having uh, the characters fall into the water and just kind of like forgot what I was supposed to do. Um, but what all, the only, all that this entails is you leave Greek on the lower cage and, or on the right hand cage and let Adara fly up to the left hand cage so that she can turn the crank and the ladder and then, uh, Greek can meet her on the other side, um, and go through. And that is faster than sending Greek back around. So, um, uh, you know, we do solve that puzzle the normal way. There isn't really a way to skip that one. Um, and get the gear uh, without having both characters there. So um, if we could do it with just one character, that would probably be faster. Um, but I haven't had any luck getting over there with just one character or doing the second part of the puzzle. Similarly, this one, um, this particular cage puzzle is uh, set up so that you can't really do it by yourself. Um, there are a couple of puzzles like that where I haven't found single character skips for them yet. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, here we go. Uh, so we send Adara over, we pick this one up. There's no, uh, fast escape from this one. You just have to go back to the cages, um, uh, regroup the characters, uh, take a little bit of damage unnecessarily, um, get stuck to a wall unnecessarily. Uh, and then, um, yeah, so we're going to use this opportunity to, uh, get Adara some of her life points back, um, because there is a very convenient crystal there. Um, and basically uh, take another hit. Uh, no, but so uh, we have to put the gears into this mechanism in order to progress. Um, and there is not really any other way around that. Um, uh, making sure these characters are stacked here uh, where all the fire is, is really important so that you don't take a, a million fire damage. Um, so uh, this this puzzle, uh, you're supposed to send one character around um, while the other character, uh, you know, waits for the door to be opened. Um, but it turns out you don't really have to do that. Um, so uh, 
just don't. <laughs> Another sibling button uh, button puzzle uh, will take us. We're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna take a safety save here um, because the next boss uh, can be a little bit uh, finicky. Um, this boss is best fought alone as Greek uh, because uh, it's. Um, uh, it, it can be hard to avoid that slam attack um, with both characters, um, especially if they get unstacked. Um, and uh, the shoulder charge can also be a little hard to avoid. And stopping to heal two different characters in the middle of a boss fight uh, is just like it's often not very practical. Um, Greek does a decent amount of damage to this boss by himself. So uh, I'm sure that this boss fight will become quicker one day when I decide to uh really or when somebody decides to really map out how to do it effectively with uh with adara as well um but uh until then uh here we are mostly just using greek to um to whack and at the end of greek's combo he'll also do three damage uh i i've, I've realized uh, sometimes anyway. I guess he gets critical hits sometimes or something. It's not really clear how the damage works on this, but that is the end of our uh, little berserker boss uh, here. Um, and so we have another sibling quote-unquote puzzle to uh, lower the thing into the furnace. That pot will go back up when you let go of the crank, so you actually do have to have both characters there uh, in order to do this. Um, and as soon as we get our refined Lorian, Adara gets a little glimpse of Radel. Um, it's worth noting that all of these little interstitial cutscenes are unskippable. Um, so I'm like, we're not watching them for uh, any reason other than that. Um, if you press the wrong stick, uh, you will in fact uh, rotate the camera uh, instead of turning the wheel. Uh, so fun fact, uh, we're going to collect a whetstone here, um, on our way out, we are also going to pick up a small potion, um, and, uh, that is just on the other side of this door. This is the thing that basically lets you back out of this area. You actually can't get out of this area the way that you came in, um, a fun fact. Um, and so now we're basically able to, uh, turn around and head back to uh, Raven's Road Camp. We're going to use the fast travel point in the forest uh, again, um, and uh, that will also save us a chunk of the walk back. Um, but that is our first puzzle fortress. Um, and so uh, on our way back, um, we do, we do want to be a little bit careful um, doing the uh, crank puzzle for the gate again. Uh, you don't have to like navigate super far around, uh, in order to, uh, do it again. You don't have to, you know, go in and out or anything. Um, but, uh, while, uh, Adara is down here holding the crank so that Greek can get through, um, an enemy can spawn, uh, that enemy right there, um, and attack her and make her let go of the gate. And, uh, sometimes that can happen while Greek is passing through the gate. So then Greek takes damage and sometimes he ends up on the wrong side of the gate and it's very, it's not fun. Um, and so we're basically just going to head back to the fast travel point as fast as possible, um, and take ourselves back to the camp. Um, we're going to leave Adara... Uh, over by the fast travel point um, so that Greek can run over to uh, Valgor by himself. Or always, always, always pick up free healing items when they're available. <laughs> um, so uh, Valgor is going to tell us how to get to uh, the snowy temple where Radel might be uh, from Adara's vision. Um, and it involves crossing over into a place called Sork Ashen. Um, but the problem is that the bridge to Sork Ashen is out right now. So we have to go looking for a way to cross the bridge. Um, so we're going to take Adara with us uh, and head over to where uh, where the bridge was um, and see if there's something that we might be able to do um, in order to uh, in order to do that. Um, so uh, the bridge to Sork Ashen is on the uh, far side of the Laura Waterfalls. Um, we're just going to stay on the upper path, uh, this time. Um, we don't, uh, you know, we don't need to take any of the lower paths to get where we're going. Um, we do have to deal with more of these annoying teleporting scouts. 
Um, but through this little area, there's some like really nice detail in the foreground if you're looking like some of the um, cat enemies are there. Um, but on the far side of this, we'll run into this guy, Yancy, who's like, well, I wouldn't be able to fell this tree and make a bridge for you myself. But if you can go find my friend Farvin um, and give him this letter, uh, he'll come here and help me. Um, and when we find Farvin, he's going to actually teleport us back here. Um, so we don't actually need to um, uh, walk all the way back, which is really nice. Um, but uh, what we're supposed to do, really... Um, is dive down into the lower parts of Valora Waterfalls um, and use Adara to solve a puzzle that lets us cross a gap that we can't cross with Greek by himself um, to get back into the lower parts of Valora Waterfalls where we were when we came out of the vegan marshes. Um, but uh, it is uh, because Greek is so much faster than Adara is um, and solving that puzzle is kind of slow. It's actually faster to just run back to town, uh, go back into the storeroom, um, drop back down into Valora Waterfalls this way. And Farvin is at the very beginning of um, of the uh, uh, this lower area right by where we came in from the marshes. We're basically just going to drop um, all the way back here right uh and at the bottom of this uh the bottom of this area uh we are going to uh well okay i jumped the gun a little bit there but um basically at the bottom of this area right down here uh there's this little hut here that we bypassed earlier and this is farvin um so this is a lot faster than going the uh the intended route um, and also substantially safer. And by leaving Adara over by Yancy, uh, okay, now we're back with Adara, who we need for the uh, to get through uh, Sork Ashen. Um, they're going to go ahead and cut down. I don't really know why Yancy needs Farvin, because it really looks like Yancy is doing all of the work cutting down this tree, if I'm, if I'm being perfectly honest. Uh, so uh, they're, uh, they're going to go ahead and join the Ravens Road camp now. Um, we're going to eat a little bit of food and move on to Sork Ashen. Sork Ashen um, introduces ice puzzles. Um, so there's bonfires that you can pick up uh, flaming sticks from and you carry them as torches to melt ice that will respawn whenever there is no fire near it. Um, we are going to do approximately none of these puzzles in Sork Ashen. And we're going to circumvent most of them in um, Arcanto's Altar, which is the, the next dungeon on the other side of these. Um, and the way that we do this is by using a little trick called Firefly. Um, if you've if you've figured out from the name of it what's going on here, um, then uh, congratulations. Uh, but you are also going to see it uh, pretty quickly. We're gonna we're gonna make a point of destroying this hive because these bugs make it really hard to uh, actually set up to to do the traversal. Um, so we do want to clear them out. There is also a large elixir there that restores five life points. Um, it is a very good uh, good uh, health item to have. So we need to use the wheel to get. Uh, Greek up here. Uh, we're going to pick up a torch from our first bonfire, uh, and that's going to let us bypass this ice. Um, we kill that uh, that thing over there. This is Firefly. Um, it's basically <laughs> uh, infinite jumping using a torch. Um, we get up there, we get the ice, uh, we let Adara through, she picks up some items. We're going to leave Greek here for, the set for a minute while Adara goes and operates the big wheel. Uh, so she's going to bring the platform up for Greek, um, and Greek is going to Firefly over here. Um, and then basically what we're going to try to do is traverse these platforms over here um, and uh, get to this area. And this this is actually a... Um, this is actually the the way back from the exit. Um, is that's that's supposed to be your escape route once you've solved all the puzzles. Um, but basically, by fire flying so that we can cross those gaps, uh, we are now a free to just ignore all the puzzles in this area um, and run to the exit um, across this top top layer. Um, and this is substantially faster than solving the puzzles, as you might guess. There's a lot of, like, pushing boats through the water so that you can cross the water with your um, fire without having to drop it. Um, and that just, like, that gets you all the way over here um, to uh, Arcanto's Altar. 
Um, so this is the snowy fortress where uh, Adara had a vision of Radel. Um, there are a lot more ice puzzles here. Um, we can't skip them as such because this is another place where we need to collect two items in order to proceed. Uh, so we do actually have to go collect those things. Um, and that will involve uh, some puzzle solving. So we're going to like pre-push this raft into place to pick up a... Um, to, to light with a torch later. Um, and uh, we're going to, you know, just, you know, take care of a couple of other things. Um, we have to cross the water here in order to uh, um, pick up uh, this torch um, and light a brazier. Uh, we don't have to light that brazier, but it makes leaving faster. Um, but uh, what we do need is to, uh, what we're supposed to do really um, is go left uh, so that we can get torches around and eventually get a torch uh, from the top over here so that we can get to this bottom puzzle and you, uh, you know, you get a moon emblem on the way and uh, all right, that's great. Uh, what we're actually going to do is firefly over here um, and then uh, bring Adara up uh, because our first emblem is over on the right here. Um so uh, we're going to go ahead and just going to you know, jump right over that guy. Um, there's a lot of enemies in here that will freeze you uh, if they hit you. Um, in particular, the bats, all of the bats in this area will turn you into ice blocks uh, if, you, uh, if you get hit by them. Um, and the, uh, the big sword guys with the shields will do like an ice blade attack. Um, you're supposed to do something fancy with pushing this ladder back and forth, and there's uh, a, actually like a lower brazier to get you fire as well. Um, but again, fire flying across this uh, will let you like light that brazier over there um, and get over here to then firefly your way up uh, this and ignore the seesaw, the second seesaw puzzle. You really only need Adara to get to the, through the first seesaw puzzle in this room, but you absolutely need her for that. There's no way for Greek to make it up to that top area by himself, and he can't get to the lower brazier without the fire from this first upper brazier. Um, so we'll go ahead and we will collect our sister. We are not going to need her for the rest of this area, with uh, uh, the exception of she needs to put her hand on something later on uh, in order for us to, to open a gate. Um, and, um, so, uh, we're going to go ahead and, uh, we're actually going to go ahead and send her ahead to the place that she's going to need to be, uh, when we get the emblems so that we don't have to worry about coming back to collect her. Um, cause we're, uh, Greek is going to just circle around and come back out here. Um, enemies can spawn there while she's waiting. Uh, so we want to make sure that she has enough health, uh, that if she like gets into combat, um, she uh she's gonna be fine um dropping this torch you really want to drop it from the first block or else it will fall in a bad place uh, but now it's here and we can use it to light this brazier it's on the raft so it's not going to fall in the water um, we're going to pick it up over here you're supposed to go hit the switch and raise the water level so that then the brazier melts these but uh, actually you can just firefly to use the torch to melt it um and uh so we get to skip doing that we're going to actually consume an item here um, to uh, be able to pick up an extra whetstone. You can only stack three of them, um, and we have four now. Uh, we'll, we'll solve our problem by getting rid of, giving two of those to Radel later, um, but it's, uh, it's, it, we want to carry them for right now. Um, so here, uh, we're going to use Firefly to light this brazier faster. You can get the torch up there without Fireflying, because you can actually, um, like, jump it onto those ledges. Um, and uh, this this one is a little bit difficult uh, because getting it over over this ledge um, against the wall is a little bit complicated. Um, but there is a backup plan in case that doesn't work, um, which is uh, that there is another lit brazier over there, and you can basically just firefly left to right instead of doing it up against the wall, um, which is actually it's it's a little bit easier. Um, this <laughs> this may look, I think it may look firefly may look easier than it actually is. Um, uh, but, uh, it is a fun little, fun little strat, um, here. Okay. So now we've got our other emblem. We've got both of our, both of our emblems. This takes us right back out here. We're going to set the emblems, um, grab Adara and move on to this next area. There are a bunch of puzzles here. This is like a vine area and you're supposed to like get torches and go to the right to come out from the top to the left. Um, 
again, we're not going to do any of that. We're going to pick up a torch here uh, and we're just going to uh, carry it across. Um, Firefly also actually moves you faster than default walking with a torch. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and melt this thing um, and call Adara to us and light with that brazier lit. Um, you don't, strictly speaking, have to stop and light that brazier, but it does save you time on the way out because it means you don't have to carry a torch all the way from the left side of this um, once you get Radle um, and move on. Um, so in this room, um, both Greek and Adara have to put their hands separately on these spots. Uh, we'll see another puzzle like that, uh, another puzzle like that a couple of times later on with all three of the siblings, um, because, uh, it is time for us to meet our older brother, Radel, who has been on his way to this fortress, busting through a window like a badass. Um, hi, Radel. Uh, welcome. Um, so Radel has a long sword. It deals more damage than Greek's short sword. Um, Radel also has a grappling hook that he can use to attach to grappling hook points and also walls. You can actually use that to move um, faster. Radel has a shield um, that he can use to block projectiles and enemy other enemy attacks. Um, and another important thing about Radel is that Radel cannot swim. Um, if Radel falls into water, he will take damage as though he has uh, fallen into a bottomless pit. Um, and this kind of sucks. Um... Sometimes the uh, grappling attachment points can be a little bit finicky, as, as you can see here. Um, and uh, that can create uh, big headaches uh, for movement as Radle and land you in uh, water. Not hot water, any water, um, which is uh, really very unfortunate. And um, because Radle is staggered when he respawns, uh, from falling in water, um, you can take additional hits while he's still staggered. Um, so it can actually be, uh, even though he has five life points um, instead of uh, the four that Greek and Adara have, um, it can be uh, really devastating uh, for him to fall in water. Um, so uh, we are going to, we're, uh, uh, he comes equipped by default with a large potion. So in this area, if you're having a little bit of trouble, you do have a backup plan. Um, but it's better not to use it and to, to be able to save it for uh, later parts of the run in case there's uh, an emergency, um, especially because Radel has so much health um, uh, and a large uh, large elixir restores five life points. Um, so this, this boss has a, a shield mechanic on it. Um, and uh, you can basically grappling hook the shield and pull it away uh, temporarily. Um, and that is uh, the entirety of this fight is just like lining up Adara to attack uh, to attack him um, while uh, while you are down for the count uh, from grabbing the shield um, and then getting Radel up as fast as possible uh, so that you can both wail on him a little bit and then it's dead. Uh, we're going to pick this up. His shield uh, is trying to return um, and like vanish at the end, but we actually activated the cutscene a little too fast. So if you look at the left hand side, there's this like little light spot. That's actually just the shield um, trying to recall during the cutscene. And you'll see as soon as the cutscene is over um, and, and all of the dialogue has ended, the shield will like uh, finish its recall animation and vanish, um, which I think is actually kind of funny. That one, that that is uh, that is really enjoyable. Um, so Radel has a, a bigger hitbox than either of his siblings. Um, he's larger, and that means that when we're doing jumping, um, he's more likely to get separated from his siblings. Keeping everyone stacked is super super important from this point out. Um, whenever we're all moving as a team. Additionally, um, there are a couple of puzzles that involve using Radel's shield to allow the um, little ones to pass through. Um, unfortunately, they can't ride on his hookshot, um, so we do actually have to separate here um, and uh, get them across as, uh, as two. Um, so, uh, you know, we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, and get out of here. Uh, as soon as we hit the exit to our Cantos altar, um, it'll trigger a little cutscene and dialogue, and Radel will ask Adara to guide us back to camp, um, and we'll just go back to camp. And there's a fast travel point not too far out to the right, um, so we would have just done that if it hadn't been for these uh, uh, this convenient cutscene back to camp. Um, but the reason that there is this cutscene back to camp is that camp got attacked while we were gone. 
um and they didn't want uh, like presumably they you know wanted the trigger of like you running through into the camp and seeing that stuff has happened um so we find out now that um some folks took a water crest into a place to try and get something called a prime evil crib. Um, I'm not sure if it's supposed to be pronounced crib or crib or crib, um, but they needed to make the airship work. Um, and uh, we have been asked to go into the ruins, uh, which are accessible from Valora waterfalls, um, and to look for them. So uh, our us three sibs are going to go. Uh, and uh, we're going to go uh, bravely into the ruins. Um, we've we've already proved our mettle in battle. Um, there is a lot of damage that we can take, just incidental damage that we can take along the way. Um, there is no like faster way to get to this part of Valora Waterfalls. Um, you just go through the standard entrance. So we are retreading ground um, that we uh, used to get rope earlier. <laughs> Uh, the enemy profile in this area has changed. Um, as the game goes on, what enemies are in the areas um, changes a lot. So now we've got these, um, you know, big, you know, shield and sword buddies. Um, and these weird plague things that will rush you and try to grab you, um, they are big tanky boys. And uh, we basically ignore them at every possible turn. Uh, anytime we don't have to fight one of those things, we absolutely don't want to. Um, so this is going to take us to the Varane Ruins. Um which is where the um, uh, the expedition has gone missing. Uh, and Varane Ruins is uh, the first place where we really have uh, three sibling puzzles to solve. Um, and it is also the second to last area of the game. Um, so uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, run our way into the Varane Ruins. Um, and uh, we're going to take a little... Uh, a little safety save uh, over at the entrance here um, because there's a lot of like kind of incidental damage to be had here. Um, there is no use for that fast travel point. It just um, isn't. So we have these little like floating rock things. Uh, Radel can grapple onto them um, and there's bells nearby that can transform them into platforms that Greek and Adara can use. Um, there's also these lasers um, that uh, that we need uh, Radel's shield in order to get past. Um, there are a lot more lasers than you actually need to get past in this area. Um, this area is actually pretty big, has a lot of really interesting puzzles, and again, we're not going to do most of them. Um, so we're going to come down here. Uh, this is this is a normal segment. There is sometimes an enemy down there, which is why I did that uh, fall attack. Um, once Radel is in position by the bell, uh, we're going to take Greek and Adara over to the left here. Um, Adara is a really good swimmer um, and can hold her breath for a really long time. Um, Greek can't really. You can kind of swim him through this segment. It really, it, it's it's not good and it sucks. Um, and it's very easy to die here. It would circumvent the puzzle, but um, it, it doesn't take that much longer to just open the door with Adara. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, Greek and Adara. We're going to position them over here to wait for the bell. Uh, they're going to hop up uh, these platforms to get over to Radel. And now the shenanigans begin. Um, so Radel's going to hit that. And Adara is basically going to uh, use the platform over here uh, to get up here um, and get up to these vines and climb up. And this is going to take her to the exit doorway uh, over here. We need to get all three siblings over here and hands on the door in order to proceed. Um, so now it's Greek's turn to skip most of the area. Um, Greek is going to climb through uh, this little passage. Of course, you can tell this is a Greek area because there's a little passage there that only Greek can pass through. And uh, you can see that tempting little uh, grapple hook right there. Um, and basically what we're going to do is uh, position Greek very precisely uh, so that he can hop onto that platform. Um, so we're going to take Radel over here. We're going to clear out the enemies over here, uh, hit the bell, wait for the platform to form, and boom. Um, Greek now doesn't have to solve any of the other puzzles. There's a long, long sequence to the left that Greek and Adara are supposed to do together um, in order to uh, do some, you know, seesaw puzzles. And you're supposed to have radial uh, block lasers from the left. Um, uh, these skips save about three minutes. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> and there's no glitches involved in any of them. It's not like fire flying. It's just precision platforming. Um, uh, so uh, this door takes us to where the expedition is. Um, they have uh, run into the Erlag Conqueror. Um, this guy really sucks. Um, and uh, this boss fight is one of the ones where we are going to use our uh, whetstones. Um, now, I will warn you in advance, I really botched this fight. Um, this guy, uh, it's very easy for him to hit you. His sword swipe is very large. Um, and if he, he hits you, it stuns your characters. Um, and so that's kind of a problem. Um, what you want to do is use these bells to immobilize him. Um, and uh, that first bell we accidentally knocked off. And as I was kind of trying to get by him... Um, I got some characters stunned and then he cocoons them. So that's great. Um, and now Adara is by herself, uh, and low on hit points. Um, and so this is just, uh, all around, not a fun time. Uh, so, uh, this is not how this fight is supposed to go. Uh, what you're supposed to do is basically jump past him while he is uh, stunned on that first platform uh, after you get a few hits in and lead him over to the right where the other bells are uh, because uh, you can basically... He'll he'll do this thing with the stone where he like knocks the bell down um, and you just... You want to get him over to where other bells are so that you can... Um, so that you can stun him again. Um, and if you do it right, it doesn't take that long. Um, but uh, unfortunately, uh, because I did kind of botch that one up trying to do fancy stuff, um, I, uh, I I made that one take a little bit uh, longer. Still a gold segment, um, actually, uh, surprisingly. Um, but uh, that was that was a really messy, uh, messy fight. Um, so, uh, unfortunately, everyone is dead except for Morella. Um, Morella is going to take us back to camp and be like, well, uh, you know, he destroyed the, or the, the conqueror, you know, that stone he was holding, that yellow stone, that was the primeval crib, creep, uh, whatever it is, um, and he destroyed it. Uh, so now we can't use that one for the airship. Um, so, uh, but fortunately, uh, the thing that we found in, uh, Arcanto's altar, uh, that we picked up from that, uh, boss there, uh, is the light seal, which lets us into a different place that has another primeval crib. Um, so there's a backup plan. Um, so they're going to take us over there on Bosco's, which are really cute armored guinea pigs. Um, and so, um... The development team for this game describes this as an interactive cinematic. Um, basically, uh, there are uh, these, uh, you know, wooden things that we're like dodging into the foreground and background to avoid. Um, and there are some pits uh, over here. You also do have to, you can make the, the thing run faster and slower by tilting the stick left and right. Um, so we are, I am holding the stick to the right the entire time. Uh, on this to make this uh, make this go faster, basically. Um, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and just uh, enjoy the relaxing uh, auto scroller. Um, this is there's like nothing particularly complicated here. Uh, you know, the first my first time through it, I didn't really understand what was going on because it doesn't um, like if you don't look at the context menu in the lower right hand corner, which is easy to forget to do. Um, you don't necessarily get an explainer of how to control the Bosco uh, through the sequence. And um, if you die in the sequence, you don't get a game over. It just restarts the sequence. But obviously, we don't want to do that. So um, that's it. After this, it's just uh, Bosco's running until we uh, get to the loading point. Um, and that is uh, going to take us to a tomb. Uh, that is going to be full of puzzles to solve uh, in order to uh, get to the primeval crib that we need in order to power our airship and leave Azor behind for a distant land. Um, so uh, we're uh, we're gonna go and uh, we're gonna go ahead. Uh, we need all three of our siblings to get in here in the first place. Um, it is just not possible 
to uh, get in without them because it's another one of those uh, everyone has to put their hand on a spot puzzles. We use the light seal here to open the door. Um, you can uh, jump over the door entirely, uh, but that will put you high enough to stagger. If you jump on top of the door and then uh, jump and double jump as you hit the ground, you can avoid staggering. I didn't avoid staggering there, but um, so we all get teleported into different spots. And everybody has to use their unique talents to uh, navigate through uh, through the labyrinth. Um, Adara is the least useful character here. Um, and uh, we are uh, I'm, I'm, I only end up using her in this because I uh, I actually did the puzzles in slightly the wrong order from the way that I prefer to do them. Um, but you can actually do this entire area uh, with just Greek and Radel. Um, Adara is, is not strictly necessary. Um, so what's going to happen here is basically uh, we need to uh, we need to get the characters into places where they can combine their powers uh, to hit three different sigils um, that break the barrier on the door. And these little uh, red glowy things uh, serve as teleporters um, that will swap the places of two different siblings uh, who are holding on other sides of them. But they'll only swap close by, so it's only adjacent ones. Um, so I can't like swap Radle over to where where Greek is right now. I have to get Greek over to where Radel is waiting. And as you can see, there are lots of little crawl tunnels for Greek to move through. He'll be doing this a lot uh, over the course of this area. Um, and so we're going to bring Greek all the way over. Now, Adara is right here. Um, and uh, so you could just like bring her over to... Uh, to let Radel out, but you have to get Greek over here anyway, um, because you actually need Greek to solve a puzzle that's very close by uh, to where they are. Um, so getting him over here actually helps you, um, even though uh, using him to solve this particular one is slightly slower than using Adara uh, to to solve it. Um, the end result of getting him closer to where he needs to be uh, for uh, the next puzzle that he needs to participate in um, it actually saves time over using Adara to do it. Um, so we're going to leave Adara down there um, and uh, go uh, hang out with our uh, little brother. Um, so basically what's going to happen here is uh, there is a tunnel uh, up and uh, to the left from where, uh, where our sibs are. Um, that Greek can't reach, but Radel can get him to it with the teleporter. Um, and so uh, Greek can then crawl through and hit the switch. Um, there is another puzzle nearby um, that involves using Radel's shield to uh, block a laser beam, uh, a couple of laser beams, but there's also water near it, so you need somebody who can swim. Um, and that's why there you have to bring another character. Um, so uh, we were supposed to do that with Greek before we did this thing, but um, we're, uh, we're going to go ahead and do it with Radel and Adara instead. There's no like particular problem with that. Um, it's not that it's not like substantially slower to take Adara here. Um, I just prefer to do it with Greek because you use like it, moving Greek around is usually advantageous. Um, so like you can go do this with Greek and then move him around to, uh, to other things. Um, so we're gonna drop Adara down here. She's gonna hit a, a switch down here that's gonna lower the water level, um, which is going to allow us to move this boat to uh, various places uh, and also get access to this lower laser beam. Uh, and of course we need Radel to block the lower laser beam. So we're gonna pop him down onto the raft um, and Adara is gonna have to drag him um, now, it's very important that uh, Radel does not touch the um, the ground uh, anywhere on that upper portion uh, of the platform, um, because the way that we're going to get out of here really quickly is we're going to drop Radel into the water. Um, and so what's going to happen is we're going to use, we're going to get them back to their shield, and then we're going to uh, uh, drop Radel into the water. And he's actually going to respawn on the last firm ledge that he was on over here, which gets them, gets him over there uh, and allows Adara to uh, get past. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just get Adara out of here. Um, and then, you know, Radel can come too. Uh, and uh, 
there we go. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put Adara back um, over by the door. Uh, and uh, the last puzzle is absolutely a, it's, it's required Greek and Radel. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get uh, Greek around to get Radel over into this left area. Um, so uh, there's a lot of these like little like shortcut doors um, that Greek ends up opening for us um, that we end up using in uh, particular ways. Uh, I did get kind of like confused about which direction I was supposed to go here uh, on this particular run, um, but actually the place to go to uh, find Radel is just to the right of those pillars. Uh, so we're going to go back now. I was a little, little clumsy, probably lost about 30 seconds, I want to say, or more on that. Um, but you know, uh, you never want to PB by too much. Um, so uh, once Radel has uh, gotten over here, um, you know, we're going to go ahead uh, and move him on to the next teleporter. And then we need Greek to come back around. Um, and uh, again, it absolutely has to be Greek because only Greek can crawl through the tunnels to get back to that, uh, to get over to that area. Um, so... Uh, we are going to go ahead and uh, send him over. Um, uh, you can teleport Adara over here. Um, and uh, that is an option for doing this segment. Um, but Greek eventually has to come over here anyway, and he moves faster than Adara. Um, well, he doesn't have to come all the way over here, but he has to circle back around to get everybody back over to the right-hand side because he can move through the tunnels and nobody else can. Um, so uh, taking him over here is not uh, like it's it's not um, it's not a bad idea. Um, it is it does end up being faster than uh, trying to. Uh, use Adara to get through that area. Um, Greek is going to want to wait there so that Radel can come back later. Um, just like stick his hand on the gem uh, and hang out. So uh, it's from from here on out, it's all Radel. Again, we have to deal with uh, finicky, grapply things. Um, this is probably like the least good version of this I've ever done. Um, <laughs> this is very embarrassing, but uh, also... Uh, kind of speaks to uh, the grappling hooks targeting. Um, you do get a free life point every time you break one of these seals, so that's a little bit of uh, a, a little bit of relief here. Um, so uh, now that we've uh, now that we've uh, opened the uh, all three seals on the Alvar Labyrinth, um, we can uh, go about the business of getting everybody over. Uh, to uh, to that door so that we can go fight the final boss. Um, we do need to get everybody out of here. Um, uh, it's it's something that we uh, eventually have to get everyone out on. Um, so it's not like we can like leave somebody behind um, to uh, to get to the boss faster. Um, so we are uh, we're gonna. Um, crawl Greek all the way around uh, and uh, get uh, get Radel teleported back. Uh, so this unfortunately uh, is kind of a long uh, long circuit that we have to make because after we teleport Radel over here, Greek has to then run all the way around again. Um, but uh, this is this is the last circuit that we'll make. Uh, and then we will be able to get out of this labyrinth um, and to the final boss. Um, the final boss is can become really hairy um, if you're not careful about your character placement and your stacking, um, but otherwise uh, is, is actually not too bad. Um, this fight is, in my opinion, less risky than the Urlog Conqueror us, but I do like to take a safety save here um, before doing this boss, uh, just so that uh, uh, you know, just for for 
in case something does go wrong. Uh, because in both of my runs prior to this, uh, something did go wrong. And in fact, I had to take a death on the final boss. Um, so here is our primeval crib, 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 whatever. Um, our fancy flight stone. Um, and removing it from this area uh, releases a plague abomination. Um, so basically, while it's climbed up here, you it's pretty hard to attack, um, but you can kind of jump and get two strikes in. Um, when it spawns on these corners, uh, it will spawn some enemies by slamming on the ground. Usually these uh, sort of uh, fly things, though it can also throw some orbs and spawn plague crawlers. Um, it also does this uh, pop up randomly in the foreground and do a slam attack. Um, in both of those cases, basically, um, when it's in the corners, you just tuck into the corner, into the far corner behind it, um, and nothing it does will hurt you. Um, so, uh, and then you just turn around and everyone wails on it. And with wet stones on both of our sword wielders, uh, it takes tons of damage during those corner phases um, and a reasonable amount of damage when it does the foreground slam. Um, so that boss goes down fairly quickly. Um, and now, uh, you know, with the, um, you know, load bearing boss defeated, um, the labyrinth is uh, plague infested and starting to fall apart. Um, and so it's time for us to escape. So all of these things that were blocking us before are now crushers um, that we have to avoid. Um, and uh, there's actually not that many of them, honestly. Uh, but we have a little escape sequence. We need everybody to make it out of the escape sequence or the ending cutscene will not trigger. Um, uh, the, uh, the Bosco writers will be like, where is everyone else? We've got to wait for Shadow. Um, but this lever would not have worked to let us out. Once you're in the labyrinth, you actually can't leave uh, until uh, until the game is finished. There are no fast travel points that let you out. Um, so uh, if you save inside of that labyrinth, you're, you're done for. Um, we want to make sure that we make these jumps uh, because uh, now we are basically just running up until we trigger the final cutscene and time. Uh, and that is Greek Memories of Azura Any Percent in 106.28. Um, I hope that you enjoyed the run. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, I'll be running more of this for sure.